Welcome to Touch Technology Review today. I'm going to show you how to master your audio using Logic Pro. We're going to be mastering an audio file that's used as a voiceover or face to camera scene such as the one that you're watching right now. So this is ideally suited to those of you producing YouTube videos or creating podcasts. We're going to look at the process of normalizing the audio. We're going to apply some noise reduction. We'll add some EQ, compression, a limiter. And in the final step, we're going to take a look at the loudness level meter that will help us determine how loud our audio file is so that we can be sure that we're compliant with the audio level standards of the various platforms. So without any further delay, let's get started and check out how to master our audio file using Logic Pro. So I've got Logic Pro open. When you first open the application, you'll probably get a screen which will ask whether you're wanting to create a software instrument, audio track, drummer track, MIDI track or guitar and bass track. So obviously, because this is a voiceover, we're gonna select the audio option and we can leave the audio input and output set to the defaults here because we're not using the audio recording feature of Logic. We already have a file that I recorded previously using my Zoom H6 audio recorder. So in order to import that file, we're going to go to the file option at the top, import, and then we're going to select the audio file option and we'll navigate to the file that we're looking for. I'll open that up and you'll see the audio waveform of that file appear on that track that we just created. We can use the vertical zoom in order to increase or decrease the view and the horizontal zoom to increase the width of the track as well. Now the first thing I can tell about this audio file is that the signal is rather low, so we're going to need to normalize that audio level in order to bring it up to a decent volume. If we listen to it now, you have to reject both possibilities. The mere possibility of there being something ineffable, which quality and quantity. quantity. You can hear that it's quite low. So in order to normalize that track, we'll click on the audio track twice to open up our track and file view window below. We'll make sure that we're on the file option and then we go into functions and select normalize. Normalizing the audio will instantly increase the level of the audio file across the whole span of the track. So now we have a great place to start with in terms of our audio file. This also works in the inverse. If your track is a little bit too loud, you can normalize it down to a lower level so that you're starting off at the best possible volume to master your audio track. So once we've normalized, we're now ready to apply noise reduction. Now, I'm not going to apply noise reduction to my file because it was recorded in such high quality using the Rode NT1 condenser microphone into the Zoom H6 audio recorder. So I can't actually hear any noise that needs to be reduced. However, if you're using a cheaper lav microphone or if you happen to have a lot of ambient noise in the particular audio that you've recorded, then you might wanna apply some noise reduction. Now, in terms of noise reduction, there's two different approaches. You can apply a noise filter or a noise gate. So if you have a lot of hissing in your track, perhaps you could go and use a noise filter, which is actually available as an effect on the left hand side. So if I go to my track one in the left hand column, go to audio effects and click on the arrows, but you'll notice that there is no noise reduction filter available because that's one of the legacy filters that you have to access by holding down the option key at the same time. So now if I hold down the option key, I'll see the legacy option appears and there's a whole range of legacy filters available. So if I want to apply some denoiser, I'll select that tool mono and if I press play on the audio to listen to it I can then adjust the threshold and the amount of noise that you're reducing so my preference here is to really avoid using this type of noise reduction as much as possible only use it if you're really noticing a high degree of hissing in the track that's usually due to using a cheaper microphone so if you are going to use it you want to go about that level if you go much higher you're going to start cutting into the actual harmonics and the audio quality of the vocal track itself. So use noise reduction very sparingly and only enough to limit the amount of excessive noise or reduce it to the point that you're not affecting the actual quality of the audio track itself. And the second way to get rid of noise is by using the noise gate, which is under 
the dynamics filter. So we'll scroll down to noise gate, click on that. And we've got a few presets here, which we can choose between an acoustic, a backing vocal, electric bass gate, fast gate, hard floor noise, percussion, or tighten up. Because this is a vocal track, we can select the backing vocal gate to begin with, and we can listen to fundamental mysteries. They recoil from even the hint of potential zone of mystery or an unresolved seam in one's worldview. So the way the gate works is you have a threshold and you have how much reduction you'd like to apply. So you need to play around with these two parameters so that you're changing the cutoff point when the signal will be cut out completely. So the noise gate, as the name gate implies, acts to open and close an audio gate, if you like, to allow the signal to be heard and to prevent it from being heard. So once it gets beyond a certain level, it will completely close. And once it's lower than that, it will open up again. So you need to adjust your threshold and reduction and also to make it less severe and to soften the impact of that gate opening and closing, you can change the attack, hold and release so it's not so obvious. And again, I would recommend that you use this one sparingly or very lightly because it can be quite severe and sound a little bit odd if you go in too hard with a noise gate. You also get an option on the right hand side that you can use to change the cutoff of the high and low frequencies. And this can be helpful too in terms of the high cutoff, especially in terms of reducing the hissing sound. You can drag the slider across, turn the monitor on so you can hear what you're doing. And if you drag the slider across, you'll be able to hear that high end range being reduced and that can cut out some hiss and sibilance. But again, I find if you go too far on these sliders, it really becomes a bit too severe and artificial. So I tend to avoid overdoing it when using these filters. I only use them very lightly if I have to. So once you've taken care of your noise problems, the next option is to go in and apply some EQ. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the effects rack on the left hand side, select the EQ option, and we'll add a basic channel EQ. You can just go in and manually adjust the sliders until you get the sound that you're looking for, or you can use a number of the presets available. And there's a whole range of options available under voice from backing vocals, brassy, bright, choir, clear vocals, male vocals, vintage, vocal presence, voice over EQ, adding warmth to the voice. There's so many presets here. I would highly encourage that you start with one of these presets. It's gonna save you a lot of time and it will give you a great idea as to what your audio will sound like before you start modifying it further. So for example, if I was to choose a male Vox O2 preset, it's gonna drop off some of the mid range and increase some high end in order to compensate for what is sometimes excessive bass in a male vocal. So let's have a listen to that one. Distinguish quality and quantity in order to confuse quantity and quality, you have to reject both possibilities. So you can turn the effect on and off in order to preview it. Is the mere possibility of there being something ineffable about personhood is. And then as you're listening to the vocal, you can simply drag the sliders in each one of the frequency ranges in order to adjust them further. So I think that the treble is a little bit high for me, so I'm not going to go with these suggested options. And then once you've selected one of the points, if you want, you can actually get further control by tightening the frequency range that you're adjusting by sliding that range in and out. And that gives you more precise control over a particular frequency range. So if we're dealing with a 3.4 kilohertz range here, I can really hone in on that range and increase it or decrease it in order to master the audio in that particular frequency range. So let's have a listen to that now. No fundamental mysteries. They recoil from even the hint. Now this is going to be a completely subjective process. So the way I tend to approach EQ is to listen out for frequencies that I find annoying or distracting and minimize them rather than boost the EQ too much in the first instance. So if I come back to this high end frequency, I might just increase it way up the top here and have a listen to that. A potential zone of mystery or an unresolved seam in one's worldview. The desire for absolute order usually leads to tears in human affairs. So I find that in the range of around three to four kilohertz, there's a little bit too much sibilance in my voice. So I like to drop that one back a little bit. In fact, I'll go against the suggestion of the preset and go a little bit under the mid range there so I can drop that frequency down. 
And then I might sort of, again, contract that a little bit more so I'm really focusing in on that range. And then I'll select the next keyframe along and I might just boost that one in the treble range a little bit more. And then in terms of the mid range, I'll probably just keep that close to the zero point. And with the bass, sometimes I find my voice can be a little bit muddy. So I like to roll off the bass at the end and even at the treble. And if I listen to, the to most people, at any rate, there is no evidence. The quantity becomes quality in matters of human expression or achievement. What matters instead, I believe, is a sense of focus, a mind in effective concentrationism, and, a and you know that might be a basic EQ to start with, and that's really cleaned up some of that sibilance, dropped off a little bit of the bass, tapered off the high end, and that gives me a very clean audio to work with. So once you're happy with your EQ, you're ready to move on to the next filter, which is going to be a compressor. So in order to access that, we'll go into the filters on the left-hand side. We'll select Dynamics, and then we'll select a compressor. One of the things I love about Logic is there's a lot of options that have already been created for you, and they're all really great sounding compressors that have been configured for you to suit different styles of vocals from the spoken word to singing and narration. So, so you can go in here and preview all of these presets until you find one that you think suits your voice the most. I quite like the opto vocal number two. And within that, you get a different set of options from the Platinum Digital to Studio VCA, Studio FET, Classic, Vintage and Vintage FET and Vintage Opto. So let's go with a classic VCA to start with and let's preview that. An adventurous individual imagination that is distinct from the crowd. Of course, I can't describe what it is the mind does because no one can. We don't understand how the... And you can really hear the difference when I turn the filter on and off as to how it allows that vocal to really stand out. And especially if you have a music backing track, this will help your vocal really stand out and get more attention. You can further tweak the preset by adjusting the ratio. So I tend to go in at around the two and then I'll increase the makeup a little bit as well. And then you can change the input gain and output gain either under or over the zero mark, depending on how loud you want it to be. We understand a lot about how parts of brains work, but there are fundamental questions that have not even been fully articulated yet. So I'm pretty happy with the way that's sounding now. The next thing we're gonna go look at is a limiter. And we'll go into the dynamics and limiter option. And again, there are presets available. We'll select the one for vocals. We'll click on play. Little ideas currently in play are variations on the notion that pseudo-Darwinism selection goes on within the brain. And now that I've added a limiter, I'm just gonna go in and add a DSR, which this could have gone in under the noise reduction category, but I like to do this at the end once I've got my audio mastered the way I like it. And the DSR helps remove some of that sibilance that I was talking about earlier. And it's particularly helpful when you're pronouncing S words, anything with the S or SH sounds in the vocals. So I'll go and select a preset for this one again, the male vocal wideband, and we'll click on play. No fundamental mysteries. They recoil from even the hint of potential zone of mystery or an unresolved seam in one's worldview. The desire for absolute order usually leads to tears in human affairs, so there is historical reason to distrust it. Materialism and it's really hard to tell what the filter is doing, so in order to help with that, I tend to put the solo on, and then I can hear the actual frequency that it's cutting, isolated, without the rest of the vocal, and that helps me decide whether I've gone too hard on the filters or too soft. So I just want to remove a very small amount of sibilance. So I'm just going to dial it in at around the 8,000 frequency range. 
and I'm going to reduce the reduction to around 22 decibels. So I definitely don't want to be cutting into the treble of my vocal too much. And by doing that, I'm going to have a very subtle impact on the end result, which is all I'm looking for. So once you've done all that, you're almost ready to export your audio file out to be used in any project. But before that, we're gonna go and check our levels by using the meters available in Logic Pro. So to do that, again, in the effect rack, we'll slide down till we get to metering and we'll go and select a multimeter. Because I normalized that audio earlier, it really is already at a point where the levels seem to be about right. So what we're aiming for here especially if you're producing a video that's going to go out to a platform like YouTube, is to make sure your audio conforms to the LUFS audio standard at negative 14 decibels. So if we have a look at the meters on the right hand side here, we get a LUFS reading and we can see that we tend to be sitting at around negative 13.4. No fundamental mysteries. They recoil from even the hint of potential zone of mystery or an unresolved seam in one's worldview. The desire for absolute order, we're really very close to our mark there at negative 13, negative 14 or thereabouts. If you look at the zero mark here, if we go anything above zero, we're going to be going far above our recommended levels. And we're sort of aiming for the spectrum to come in at around your negative five to so negative six. Materialist extremists. extremists at any peak moment. And we want an average reading here of around negative 14. Have long seemed determined to win a race. Now, if it was a little bit loud or a little bit too soft, we can just go back into any one of these areas here, let's say the limiter, and change the gain. And that should give us a perfect level for when we're publishing to YouTube. If I bring it into my audio editor of choice, at the moment that is DaVinci Resolve, I'll also use the loudness level meter within the video application before I export, just to make sure that nothing's changed once I've gone into my video editor. And that again is going to conform to that negative 14 LUFS standard. So that's pretty much my process for mastering audio in Logic Pro. It's a matter of about three or four filters. You can use a lot of the presets available in Logic, which is one of the great things about the application. And if you are looking for complete customization over that sound, you can go in there and manually adjust every single parameter in all those filters. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you're notified of up and coming video releases. And if you're looking for tips on how to record your audio during a video production, I've created a video with five steps to improve your audio and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye for now.